partner with Axon, you immediately gain access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. We carry all major brands and sizes of tires and wheels. We specialize in large diameter wheels for large equipment. We have one of the largest OEM replacement wheel inventories in North America. Known for extreme flotation setups, duals, and triples, we have wheels for all makes and models of tractors, sprayers, combines, and grain carts. If we don't have the wheel in stock, we'll custom build, sandblast, and paint in-house. There isn't a more vast inventory in North America dedicated to helping dealers move more iron. With facilities on the West Coast and in the heart of the Midwest, leverage our 230,000 square feet of indoor inventory to solve any problem a grower may have. Move more iron with Axon. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by these great sponsors. Axon started out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. Imagine having 100 years of tire and wheel knowledge in your back pocket the next time you sell a piece of ag equipment. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. No matter how you buy your ag equipment, whether it's from a dealer, an auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment sales data. TractorZoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and auctionable pricing insights. This podcast is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. The Dealer Connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management is an affordable Salesforce-based solution for your dealership. Create connected customer experience and transform how you work. In the 21st century Hard-working people Working hard for you and me Moving higher Time and time again Through the years you'll find us here Moving higher Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This edition of Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Fastline Media Group. So I've got Dean Bark here. He's a president of Fastline. Dean, thanks for being on the show, man. Absolutely, Casey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. So we've got a, a unique marketplace, to say the least, I think, right now, as you take a look what's going on around you. Um, you know, obviously, combines are, are a big point of conversation, and uh, they always are. <laughs> They're never not a point of conversation, seems like. Yeah. So, Dean, before we get into that, though, let's talk a little bit about what you, who you are, what you, and what you do for Fastline, and, and how you got to where you're at today. Absolutely. So, I'm the president of Fastline. I've been with the organization for about five and a half years, Casey. I've been in the uh, president role for about ten months now. Prior to that, yeah. I was on the operation side, uh, chief financial officer, and also helped uh, from our manufacturing side of things. Awesome. Okay. Good deal. So, you've been around long enough to to know what's going on and and uh, doing that. Before you were in Fastline, what what did you do? Where are we at? Yeah, I was uh, with a couple of big companies. I was with uh, Yum Brands, uh, so okay. uh, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll, headquartered here in Louisville, so I spent about six years over there at Yum Brands. So right on. Kind of always so, been in the food space, ag space to some degree. Yep. So I'm from uh, I'm from Wichita, Kansas. So I remember when Pizza Hut was part of PepsiCo and all that, and and down there and, and their headquarters there in Wichita. So absolutely, I think they started there in Wichita. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. Right on. So. Okay, well, good. So let's jump over here and talk a little bit about what Fastline's doing. So we kind of opened up talking about combines and those kind of things, but you hit me with something I wasn't even aware of uh, before we started recording. You, you guys are sticking your toe into the uh, auction business. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so super exciting. I mean, you know, I mean, anybody that knows Fastline for a long period of time knows it says, you know, the uh, the catalog company that really was able to kind of go uh, national on, on the catalog side of things. I think throughout the years, we've really evolved on the digital uh, side. We have a complete digital offering now and uh, yeah, rolling out into the auction space. So our first auction uh, starts, the bidding starts on that July 11th. So we're about two and a half weeks away from that. Super excited about it. Uh, bidding will close on August 1st. So uh, uh, our goal is to get into the online auction space. Uh, you know, we're going to probably take it, take it a little slow getting into it. We want to make sure that we're servicing our customers effectively. Sure. 
Um, but uh, we, we are hopes of, of getting into maybe a buy uh, bi weekly uh, uh, auction uh, auction space moving forward. Right on. Okay. So first one coming up in uh, August. Do you have what's your mix look like? Do you have a lot of tractors, a lot of comic? What's your mix of machines look like? Yeah, good question. Yeah, I mean, we have a, a little bit, a uh, good little mix of, uh, of both tractors and combines, trying to finalize that right now as we speak. As you know, into that space, everybody's trying to wait to the last minute before yeah. they uh, before yeah. they jump in, which I don't yeah. I don't fault them completely. But uh, yeah. we'll have all of that finalized here in the next week and a half, but hoping to have a good mix of tractors, combines, you know, balers. Uh, just all the nine yards, uh, you know, we're really excited about getting into it. The challenge of of doing something um, new, right, is everybody wants to kind of to see how it works before they jump in. So just trying to trying to kind of get everybody comfortable with that uh, just by, you know, with some of the things that we can bring to the table that really other auction companies can. I mean, we have the really the largest audience within the agricultural community. We have over a million farmers on our list that are engaged uh, we have over 400,000 uh, social media followers, uh, you know, whether it's Facebook primarily, but also with Instagram and then TikTok. So, you know, just trying to leverage the, the size and the magnitude of our audience uh, is going to be key, you know, key to our success long term, you know, in the auction space, I believe. Yeah. So how's your response been to your first sale so far? You feel like you've gotten a good a good crowd of people interested in what you guys are doing? Absolutely. Yeah. So we really just hit send. I would say we wanted to make sure we had some accumulation of equipment. Sure. We've got about 50 or 60 lots up there right now. And again, we've got a couple, yeah. uh, I've got about a week and a half, two weeks to go to finalize that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're getting going. We got a pretty good start, uh, but we really just clicked send yesterday, I'd say, so to speak, on really our, our social media campaigns, really going out with, you know, farmer email blast, dealer email blast. Uh, really going to hit social media hard. You'll see some things on Facebook and Instagram over the next couple of days, really trying to encourage bidders to get out there and, and, and sign up from a bidding standpoint. That's really the focus now is, you know, we really want to make sure whether it's whether it's 200 lots or even if it's just 50 lots, whatever it is on that first auction, we want to make sure that, you know, we're delivering good good results for our sellers, right? And so I think yeah. we can do that. We can certainly do that, you know, if we can get the, and attract the bidders, uh, yeah. you know, to come come online. And that's that's really our focus here over the next couple of weeks. Sure. Um, as you're looking across the uh, spectrum, there, I mean, are you are you partnered up with another auction house? You guys doing this in-house type of deal using proxy bid? Like, how, how does that functionality work? Yeah, great questions. No, we're doing it all on our own. We had talked okay. about um, you maybe partnering with some other auction companies. We had had discussions, but you know, the more we kind of got into it, we, we've got the knowledge, we've got the expertise on our sales team. Uh, we've got folks that had uh, been with uh, you know large auction companies before, uh, just leveraging that on the sales side of things, and then uh, really going out. We bought uh, and, and built our own bidding platform, uh, uh -huh. so it's an online, really smooth, very efficient uh, bidding platform. So, uh, and again, it, that's hitting social media right now. So. I'd encourage people uh, to go out and try to sign up as a bidder. You'll get to go see our platform. And then once our, once our auction comes live, of course, you'll start to see some of the lots that we've got out there. So sure. going to go at it all by ourselves. Uh, we've got a, you know, a sales team across the country that's going to be engaged, that's going to be focused. I mean, a couple of things I think that's going to hopefully differentiate us on the sales side of things is, you know, we're going to have somebody the boots on the ground, right? So we're going to have somebody out there inspecting every piece of equipment. Uh, we've okay. also got, yeah, and we've also got a quality department that's going to inspect and to make sure that, you know, the, the quality of the pictures and everything that's going online is going to be, you know, top notch, right? I mean, we're going to get people comfortable uh, with some of the things that we've got listed online. So really going to try to go at this from multiple different avenues to make sure that we get our sellers comfortable and then also the buyers comfortable that you know the, the, there's a good quality that you're going to see online with our with our pictures sure okay um as you look at the, the equipment just kind of a rough geographical area do you have stuff from all over the country coming in or is it more you know midwest mid you know south where, where's a lot of your stuff coming from yeah, so starting out, I mean, really, we got a pretty uh, heavy sales presence within the Midwest. Kansas, mm -hmm. Oklahoma is probably where we're seeing a, a good portion of, of a mix. But uh, also, there's some lots coming in from Florida and then the Carolinas. And our goal is really to kind of infiltrate the uh, the Southeast pretty hard, uh, yeah. as well as the Midwest moving forward. So, you know, I think you'll see snippets of that on this first auction or two. But I, I think it'll take us a little bit of time to really kind of, uh, you know, build up that entire uh, national presence. But that's absolutely sure. our hope moving yep. forward. It's a beauty. That's a beautiful thing about the online auction space is that it doesn't really matter where it's at. You're selling it on a lot someplace, so you don't have to haul yep. it to one central place or anything like that. So yeah, it makes a makes a big difference in in how how that bidding takes place for sure. For sure. Yep. True. Hundred <clears throat> percent. Yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, I'm 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 
anxious to watch your first sell here. So I'm, I'm ready to see what that looks like. So, um, yep. so let's talk a little bit about what you see happening out in the marketplace. I mean, like we just kind of started up with, it's uh, unique to say the least. I mean, you're just, just kind of looking at some of the, uh, the age of the equipment that we see out there, how new it is and, and the yep. price associated with that. I guess as you're looking at, at your website and the data that you guys are coming across there, are you seeing a, uh, a fall off maybe a little bit in some of the later model, lower hour stuff or, and seeing maybe some of this three and five year old stuff starting to pick up and sell, I guess, where, where do you see the sweet spot right now on your site? Yeah, good question. I would say definitely in that three to five year spot is really kind of the sweet spot right now. I mean, definitely, you know, we've we've all been impacted over the last couple of years, obviously with COVID and some of the inventory challenges that were going out in the industry, starting to see, you know, with anything, I think people kind of uh, make some decisions and kind of overshoot some things, you know, just based off the, the the sheer need of things. So I definitely see some of the used equipment inventory levels starting to increase out there. Definitely, yeah. you know, on, on the on the combine side of things right now. Sure. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of folks that are interested in uh, you know talking to us about that from an auction standpoint, trying to move some of those sure. uh, right. So yeah, I've kind of had this uh, couple about three or four months ago. I kind of started talking about hey, you know, we're going to see this. August, September, October through the end of the year time frame where you're going to start seeing some of these combines start showing up and and, I, and I'm waiting for it. I mean, we're starting to see the onesie twosies come in. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. waiting for the uh, the dealer that shows up and says, all right, we're going to sell 25 combines today type of thing. I- you know, you're nailing it, and I think it's yeah. coming pretty quick. I mean, just yeah. from some conversations that we're having, I think people are building. There's no doubt yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah and because the onesie twosie things don't really affect the market. Like like you know one big day event where you you know you go out and dump twenty five combines on the marketplace all at one time and in the grand scheme of things that's I mean there's whatever there's there's some ten thousand some odd combines out there on the market right now sure but but when you start looking at some of the stuff uh, my biggest concern I have is not necessarily <clears throat> how many combines are getting sold but ultimately what they sell for and I and I, I just have a it, these big class 10 and class 11 combines that you see out there right now that are going to come to fruition that are, you know, 700 plus thousand dollar combines. And they, they take a, a 25 or, you know, yep. 30 or 40% hit and they go from 700 to 500. That, that has such a ripple effect on all the stuff downstream that what that, what that looks like is going to be such a, such a significant move on the marketplace that it's going to have a, a, a complete reset of the market that is going it's going to, it's going to hurt. I mean, I, I, I kind of, I thought there was going to be a soft lane on this deal, but the more I look at it, it's just it's going to be painful. You know, I I I, I tend to agree with you, at least from what some of the data and some of the conversations that we're having. I mean, it could yeah. it could be painful out there. So um, yeah. that's that's one of the things we're we're trying to do, is trying to help. Obviously, you know, wherever yeah. we possibly can with our dealers and sure, you know, certainly certainly in the auction space. Sure. So as you look out there now. Um, is there one other than combines? Is there is there a, a segment that that's starting to stick out to you a little bit? I'm paying attention to four wheel drives. I've got this, you know, so I call it bro science type of approach to this, where I've got this, <laughs> I've got this five year kind of shift between four wheel drives and sprayers because of no till, uh, three to five year oh. because of no till. Like you know, they're going to switch in from tillage to back to, to spraying, and there's when sprayers are hot, four wheel drives aren't, and when you know, vice versa. So I guess yep, yep. anything out there standing out to you right now other than combines? I, you know, maybe a little bit of that, but, uh, but no, no, not at the moment. I think combines is definitely where uh, yeah. the, all, all the interest is at. Yeah. That's, that's where everyone's got their, uh, yep. definitely got their focus on um, looking out there. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the other trend lines you guys are seeing from a customer standpoint, as you guys look at your customer base that are coming into buy-in. Um, I mean, what, what's your, What's your feel right there? I mean, I know you said that three to five year old stuff is what's there, but are you looking at more tractors or combines or you know what is it that they're that they're interested in right now off your site? Yeah, right now, I mean, a lot of as as usual. I mean, the majority of our inventory is going to be in some type of high, uh, tractors. You know, whether sure. it's a low horsepower or yeah. high control horsepower. So, still see a lot of uh, engagement on that side of things. Of course, we talked about the combines, sprayers as well. Yeah, yeah. As you're looking out there, do you see anything, any big movement on on uh, like tillage pieces or planters at all right now? Where you're seeing maybe some spike up in those because just from the sheer fact of I'll just use planters for example. There's just not that many planters out there. So I didn't know if you if you saw some more movement in maybe some older planters, looking at maybe doing some upgrades and stuff like that. But is is the older planter market something that's of interest to folks right now? 
It is. It is. Absolutely. That's definitely one of the areas that we see some, uh, you know, I mean, one of the things with our data is, right, we can always track just who's sure. coming on our site and you know, what they're looking at. Yeah, we're definitely mm-hmm. seeing uh, some some uptick in that over the last probably three, six months. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing where I, I, you know, an old planner is now worth maybe a little bit more than it used to be just because of there's some interest in, you know, a 2010 planner that probably wasn't there, you know, whatever, you know. You know, it's yep, 14 yep. year old, 13 year old planner, you know, and, and it's they're, they're going to tear it back down and make it new again because all that technology is now available pretty much across the board, whether you're talking deer case, echo, whoever. I mean, that stuff's all there that you can that you can do that. There's a, a full retro kit kind of service market, I guess, is the best way to put it out there. I mean, there's there's so many different places to go look at that. Um, are you seeing much at all on the planner side of stuff starting to show up that had been? retrofitted like maybe there's a bigger percentage of that out there i don't know if you guys track that or not but it's something i've been kind of paying attention to here a little bit because it's gained such popularity over the last two or three years interesting now you know we don't probably track that as much so i, yeah. I really probably should, you know wouldn't be able to to answer give you a good answer on that but yeah that's that's uh just because of it just seems like there's so much of that going on right now where there's more folks taking a look at maybe it's so whether it's precision or deer side or whatever it is that they're looking at but there's I'm waiting to see those used ones hit the market and see what that the used used hit the market and, and yep. put back put back together again. So it'll be interesting to watch that kind of unfold over over the rest 100%. of the year. Yeah. Yep. So let's let's talk a little bit about some. I know you got the auction stuff going. But let's talk a little bit about some of the data stuff that you have out there and and how your customers are using that data. Absolutely. So, you know, as I mentioned, I mean, you know, we started off, you know, we've been around for 45 years, you know, heavy into the print side of things. And then I'd say probably about Five to ten years ago, when the industry started to shift a little bit more on the digital side of things, we were, you know, keenly aware of that. We made millions and millions of dollars from an investment standpoint to really make sure that we were beefed up on the digital side of things. Mm-hmm. You know, just started out with some of the basic digital offerings, and then now we've kind of uh, evolved into having, you know, the largest suite of digital capabilities in the industry, right? And a lot of people, just similar to the auctions, a lot of people don't think of Fastline in that regard, you know, and they think of us still mostly on the print side, and we're still proud of our catalogs. But, but yeah, digitally, we've come, you know, really full circle. So, you know, full suite of products, you know, whether it's just, you know, basic you know, SEO, PPC type of things that we can offer our dealers. Obviously, we can do website builds. Uh, we can do a lot of targeting. We can do a lot of geofencing, geo radius type of, uh, of advertising, you know, for folks as well. Um, and then also we have the ability to, you know, from a pixel based product, we can tell, you know, some of our, our dealers exactly, you know, who's coming to their website, you know, with, with name, address, email information. Uh, and then, you know, also be able to kind of show them some of the page paths that they viewed on their customer site. So, you know, that's just another a cool, a cool tool, I guess I would say, from a marketing standpoint, you know, for some of the dealers out there to be able to get a little bit more in touch uh, and, and, and a little bit more knowledgeable about their audience and who's actually coming to their site looking to, to shop and buy. Yeah. So uh, those are those are some of the things digitally that we can uh, that we can offer our customers. And obviously, we use those our, ourselves, you know, with our sure. with our farmer audience that uh, that we have, you know, yeah. that we have. Uh, been able to accumulate over the years yeah that uh you know tracking somebody across the internet and what they're doing uh has gotten to be such a i mean you look at like the facebook's and the googles of the world and, and yeah how much information they have on what we're doing every day but just just know what that customer's looking at and being able to make that decision um, yeah. when you start marketing to that person is such a big deal when you're looking at that it is. And I think, you know, where you know, we, we've had it for a couple of years, Casey, and I think where it fell short maybe early on was we tried and, you know, part of it was our own fault, candidly, just about being honest. I mean, we would try to couple that, you know, for our for our dealers with like an email campaign, you know, mm-hmm. let's let's, you know, let's go see, you know, Casey Seymour's coming to our site. Let's just let's hit him with an email campaign, see if we can gauge his email, his interest. You know, but the challenge with that is everybody gets inundated with emails nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I think the right play is kind of like a, you know, a combination of a marketing approach. Sure, you can kind of warm folks up maybe with an email, but really I think where the bigger play is maybe is on the direct mail piece uh, that you could kind of offer up with that. You know, we, we have the ability to do that in-house and it's very inexpensive really, uh, you know, from a, from a, you know, cost per contact, it's uh, extremely inexpensive. So I think if you, if you couple, you know, a full complete, you know, marketing um, program around that, I think that that's where that product is super successful. We have a, a lot of dealers out there, you know, deal deer case uh, that are seeing some good uh, good success in that in, in that uh, that website product. Yeah. As you take a look at the future of the stuff, what's on the horizon for Fastline right now? 
Yeah, really. So right now it's uh, it's two things. Obviously the auction, we talked a little bit about that. Super excited about getting that thing going. I mean, like I said, I talked about our audience having like the largest, you know, engaged audience in the space with our farmers, uh, as well as our social media. We also are coming in with the lowest commission rates, you know, no buyer fees, no added fees. So I think we can be really competitive with some of the big players out there. That's that's our goal. And that's going to be really our focus, I would say, you know, through the end of 23, probably even into Q1, 24, we really want to get that set up, uh, and offer that service out there, you know, for buyers and sellers to make sure that we're successful there. Uh, and then I'd say after that, you, you, you've, you've hit it already with just a lot of the questions that you've asked early on. We've got to... Uh, you know, we're, we're pretty good at the moment. We got to get better on our data, right? I mean, there's, there, we're, we're at a, you know, we've got a treasure trove of data that we're sitting on at our fingertips just for the folks coming to our site, you know, our, our, our reader listing and you're just being able to uh, glean better insights from that information just so we can provide that service out to our dealers, of course, but then also to the farmers. There's lots of things that we can uh, we can show trends on, you know, what are the most popular items are coming on our site. And, and I think that that's something uh, that you'll see us move into in, in 24 a little bit further uh, along than what we've got right now, just providing that service to the farmers and the dealers. I'd say those two things, data, obviously, and then the auctions sure. is, is really where you're going to see us moving forward. And then continuing to beef up our capabilities just with digital marketing and then also support and print. But we still have, uh, believe it or not, I mean, we still have 19 catalogs all across the country. Um, every edition, uh, we mail out about 225,000 catalogs. We hit about 4 million catalogs a year. So we still have a heavy print presence uh, yeah. that we want to continue to support as well. Yep. That's, and that's, that's the thing about, you know, people think digital is dead and it, it's not nearly what it was 20 years ago, but it's still, it's still there and it's still, it uh, still fighting around. Yeah. It, it is. It's funny. And there's still connectivity issues out there. I literally, <laughs> today I was driving over to Virginia, uh, just, just, just here in the area and it's kind of in the mountain area. I mean, it, it, you know, phone dropped five, three, four times. And it's like, so there are still some connectivity areas uh, out there that print can play. And I think, you know, using data, we can also still, be successful on the print side of things to make sure we're targeting certain radiuses uh, for our dealer base, for our customers. So uh, yeah, I think I think you've got to have some type of an integrated marketing approach uh, in order to be successful. You know, digital is where you're going to get your you know instantaneous results. I'm not going to dispute that or argue that, but I think a, a complemented uh, marketing approach I think is where you're ultimately going to be the most successful. Absolutely for sure. All right, Dean, good stuff, man. Uh, what's the best way for people to get a hold of Fast Sign? Is there a place to go look up your rep or someplace like that? What's the best way to do that? Yeah, appreciate it. So a uh, couple of different places. I mean, obviously, our, our, our marketplace online is fastline.com. We have about 115,000 pieces of equipment online there. Uh, we also have fastlinemarketinggroup.com is uh, is our site that talks more about uh, you know all the products and offerings that we have, capabilities that we have. And then, of course, social media. Hit us on Facebook. You'll see us on Fastline. Uh, you hit us on TikTok as well as Instagram, all of those places out there. If you look just fast line uh that's where you're going to find us and i really appreciate the opportunity yeah you know dean i appreciate you being on man and i look forward to, to meeting you down in nashville coming up here you guys are gonna have a booth down there so uh folks around there want to get some more information about what you're doing at fast line, i'm sure you'll have a, a spread there that you can everyone can kind of see what you guys are doing right yes sir absolutely looking forward to getting down there and meeting you and then getting down there in nashville there in september so super yeah. excited about that all right dean well, i appreciate you taking the time to be on the podcast man Yep. Thanks, Casey. Appreciate it. Right on. Take I'm care. Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. Go to LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast. Check out the video version over on our YouTube channel, which is the Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. Check that out there. More information about the Moving Iron Summit, go to movingironllc.com. All the information is there. Or you can see me an email at Moving Iron Podcast at Moving Iron Podcast.com. If you want to take advantage of the $50 rebate from uh, the folks over at Axon, be one of the first 150 people to sign up and you'll get that taken care of. So with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Dean Bark. Move smart, folks. Out. Axon started out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. Imagine having 100 years of tire and wheel knowledge in your back pocket the next time you sell a piece of ag equipment. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800 657 4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. No matter how you buy your ag equipment, whether it's from a dealer, an auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment sales data. 
TractorZoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and auctionable pricing insights. This podcast is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. The Dealer Connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management is an affordable Salesforce-based solution for your dealership. Create connected customer experience and transform how you work. Moving higher in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving higher time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. Moving out.